What's up, everyone? My name is Iceman. Welcome back to Falcon 4 Panel Allied Force. We just finished the max turn uh, below corner airspeed uh, mission. So now we're doing mission 6, which is minimum altitude split S. Okay. There's a picture there. So split S, this is what it looks like. Okay, pretty simple. So what you do is use the split S maneuver to simultaneously change your heading by 180 degrees and descend to a low altitude. In the three preceding training missions, we turn the jet in a horizontal plane. Uh, in other words, uh, we stayed level with the horizon while turning. The split S maneuver is the first of a series of three training missions in which you will practice maneuvering the jet in the vertical plane. The vertical plane extends above and below the aircraft's current altitude. So the horizontal plane is like left to right. So if you see the uh, little mountain there, if you if the mountain was going right to left uh, on your canopy, so you're turning right or left, uh, and the, the mountain was going the other way, that's your horizontal plane. This is your vertical plane. So it's basically the mountain will either be going up or down. Okay. Since air combat is a three-dimensional affair, it's important to master turning the jet in both the horizontal and vertical planes. A big difference between the two manu different maneuvering planes is the effect of gravity on the jet. If you are turning the jet straight across the horizon in the horizontal plane, then gravity has relatively little effect on your turn performance. When you pull the nose up or down in the vertical, however, gravity becomes a player. Uh, let's see, was there a... okay. So this is figure dash two. So this is what I was talking about. Horizontal plane is is like four is uh, left right. Uh, vertical plane is up down. Okay. Figure six dash three illustrates G R, which stands for radial G. Um, the G that the aircraft is actually adding to the turn rate and radius equation. In figure three, six dash three, the cockpit G at the start of the pull is five Gs. So figure six, uh, six dash three. So the cockpit G at the start of the pull is five Gs. So this is the start of the pull right here. So that's five Gs. Okay. The cockpit G is the G being felt and read out on the G meter in the cockpit at the point the jet is pulling straight up. However, so the effective G, uh, or radio G, is only 4 Gs. Okay, so, so when you start, when you start, you start at 4 G. so this is 4 Gs here, like here, if I understand correctly. It's the 4 Gs is from here, up to here. So it goes from 4 Gs to 5 Gs at this uh position so 5g is at this position 4g is when you start so here to here is 4g 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 then 5 if i understand that correctly as the jet gets to 90 degrees straight up or down the radio g's go to 5g's to match cockpit g figure 6 dash 3 says that cockpit g is not equal to radio or turning g when maneuvering in the vertical remember that 2 degrees per second is a significant turning advantage the extra G you can get by placing your nose below the horizon when you t you turn can give you at least two degrees per second turn advantage. Uh, most of the time, one uh, radio G uh, equates to three. Wait, three degrees minus four degrees per second. I don't know what that means to be honest. I honestly don't understand what this means. Three degrees minus four degrees per second. I Okay. Oh, probably three degrees to four degrees per second. It was just like three degrees to four degrees per second. Okay, that's probably what that means. Don't quote me on that though. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Um, you can see the concept of radio G even more clearly in Figure Six Dash Four, in which both fires are pulling the TR with LV same cockpit G. What? Oh, LV is probably lift lif vector, and I don't know what TR is. Be honest. Figure six dash four. Okay. TR with LV above horizon. TR with LV below horizon. Um. Okay. So, notice that the fighter below horizon with his lip vector. Be Wait. Notice that the fighter below horizon with his lip vector below horizon. The horizon is turning more tightly. Lip vector is an imaginary area that's protected from TR with lip vector at the top of 
the top of the jet perpendicular to the above horizons above horizon aircraft's wings. That is so fucking complicated to comprehend that. Oh my god. Uh, what is not so obvious is that the fire turning toward the ground is also moving or rating than it is faster. Uh, TR with lift vector above horizon. So lift vector above horizon is coming up like this. So basically, if I understand correctly, what they're saying basically is... Oh, turn rate. So this is probably turn rate. Is TR. It's probably turn rate. Uh, or turn radius, one of the two. Turn, no, turn rate. It's got to be turn rate. So let me read this again. You can see the cockpit concept of Radio G even more clearly in figure 6.4. Uh, in which both fires are pulling the turn rate with the vector same cockpit G. That's so... Like, that's grammatically weird. Um, notice that the fighter below the horizon with his lip vector below the horizon is turning more tightly. Uh, lip vector is imaginary that is protected from turn rate with lip vector at top of jet perpendicular to the above horizon's aircraft's wings. That is so complicated. The way that's the way that's worded is so complicated. If someone can. If someone understands exactly how they're wording this, uh, please let me know because this is super complicated the way this is worded. It's not worded very well. Basically, what I think I'm gathering from it is um, that... I think what I'm gathering from this is... So here, basically, as you pull up in the vertical, like your turn... Let's see... Yeah, so here basically the f you start when when you're pulling at 4 Gs, you start the pull at 4 Gs and then it starts to go to 5 Gs. So basically you have to kind of pull back on the stick a little bit more um, like in this area, but like you keep pulling back on the stick very slowly. Um, because otherwise, if you don't, you can store if you just keep it there, depending on how far back on the stick, how much back pressure you have on the stick. If you have too little, you can store. Um, but if you keep pulling back on the stick a little bit more and adding more and more back pressure, you know, you know, in each of these stages, uh, you'll be adding more and more G to the turn rate. So it's basically what that's saying. It's really hard for me to understand and honestly explain at the same time this is not worded very well to be honest i could always ask ChatGPT to explain it <laughs> uh but um but yeah so so that's what this is uh for this here basically it's saying the turn rate with the lift vector below the horizon so the turn rate is faster so the lift vector I'm not sure what this dot is. I can't tell. I can't read this. I can't read this here. But basically, what it's saying is, if the lift vector is above the horizon, it has a bigger, it has less of a turn rate than the if the lift vector was below the horizon. And that's basically because when the lift vector is below the horizon, you are you are slowly gaining like airspeed. Like there's more airspeed going over the wings. Whereas if you're going up, uh, your um, gravity is getting stronger and stronger. There's more weight applied because you're getting higher. There's air's less dense, and you know gravity becomes stronger because you know your cock gets heavy or whatever. So that's figure six S four. I this is ex again extremely difficult to really comprehend because it's worded really weirdly. But I think I'm understanding that correctly. If I'm not, please let me know and please explain. <laughs> uh, this is obviously pretty easy to understand here. Uh, so, training mission overview. In this mission, you'll practice flying a split S maneuver from 7,000 feet. Initial conditions. Airspeed 400 knots. Altitude 7,000 feet AGO above ground level. Throttle setting mid-range. Configuration, clean. Mission description. Use this maneuver to descend quickly to low altitude. To execute the maneuver, Perform the following steps. Figure 6 5. Step 1. Load training mission 06, min, altitude, split S from training section. Step 2. Press F to record your flight using the Acme feature. 
Step 3. At 7,000 feet, adjust the throttle to maintain 400 knots. Do not accelerate. Step 4. Will the jet inverted? Figure 6 plus 5 shows its inverted position. Okay. Step 5. Uh, pull full back on the stick to command the maximum G possible. As the Gs increase uh, during your dive, pull the throttle back slightly to maintain 400 knots. If you're still going too fast, extend the speed brakes by pressing Bravo. Don't forget to retract them when you get to the proper airspeed. The maneuver is complete when the jet is in level flight heading in the opposite direction as shown in figure 6 plus 6. Step 6. Press F to stop the Acme recording. Step 7, press escape and select end mission to end the training mission. So basically we want to keep it at 400 knots um, the whole way through if we can. This maneuver is easy to do if you control your SB. The common mistake made during a split S is to ease up on the G's and accelerate. The SB builds so with the turn radius causing you to impact the ground. So we've got to be careful. Figure 6 plus 6. Okay, so he's in the opposite direction. 7,000 feet is the lowest altitude from which you can comfortably perform a split S at 400 knots. It can be done from as low as 5,000 feet, but you must be perfect or you will plant yourself into the terrain. After successfully completing the split S maneuver from 7,000 feet and 400 knots, enter the training mission again and fly down to 5,000 feet, try from this lower altitude. In addition to experimenting at lower altitudes, you can also vary the airspeed from which you enter the split S. Uh, let's see. Also, the the SP from the splash. For example, you should be able to splash from 4,000 feet AGO at 300 knots because you have a tighter turn radius at this SP than you do uh, at 400 knots. Acme debrief. Select Acme from the main menu on the left. Review the mission you just flew by clicking on the last tape in the list and then clicking on the load button. After your Acme tape loads, try the following Acme option settings: camera isometric, labels name, airspeed, and altitude. Altitude pause on. Wing trails maximum. Vehicle magnification times 8. Use the view controls to view the turn from an isometric angle or a side view of the jet. Right, so that's split S, minimum altitude split S. So we're going to do one from 7,000 and one from 5,000. Okay? Uh, we're going to do both so it can be done. Uh, I've never done it at 5,000 though. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. All right, we have loaded. So let's do it. Training. Uh, minimum altitude split S. Uh, using the lessons learned in the corner airspeed scenarios, complete a split S maneuver and note how airspeed control affects your recovery altitude. Right, so let's do it. Commit. Uh, let's do it. Alright, we are in. Let's see if we can do this. So, we're going to go to 400 knots. 7,000 feet. Go up to 400 knots. And then, when we go to 400 knots, we're going <coughs> to... We're going to roll the jet inverted. And then, uh, pull back on the stick. And try to maintain 400 knots. So, we're going to get power. 400 knots. Alright, roll the jet inverted. Alright, let's go. Pull. Oh, God. <laughs> we did it. That was terrible, but we did it. I should have pulled. I should have pulled harder. Because we started gaining a lot of airspeed. Um. Let me go up and try it again. Actually, let me just let me just restart the mission. All right, let's go. So four hundred. That was a terrible. That was terrible. But we'll do it again. Um, six. Four hundred. All right, let's go. Total idle. Four hundred. Did it. It's a little sloppy, but we we did it. So. Up seven thousand feet once more. Let's 
do this. Sloppy at it, but let's do it. Better. It wasn't really smooth, but you know, it's what it is. It's whatever. Let's. <laughs> Let's try it at 5,000. Oh god, in the clouds. That's gonna suck. Oh no, outside the clouds. Actually, we'll do it... Um, we'll do it at 7,000 one more time, and then we'll do it at 5,000. See how it is. Back and pull. Better. All right, so now one more time, five thousand feet. Let's do one. Just gonna do it once because I don't want to do it a second time and possibly crash or whatever. That was aggressive. <laughs> yep. Let's go down to 5,000. Alright, 5,000. Let's go up to 400. Alright, 400. 3, 2, one. All right, let's do it, folks. Wish me luck. Altitude. Right. I did it. Altitude. Three hundred feet. Oh my god. <laughs> it wasn't that smooth, but I still did it. So. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do one more. Let's do one more just for fun. Try to make it a little bit smoother. Look at that. 5,000 feet. <laughs> that was great. Man, I'm aggressive at this. Damn. Alright. Four knots. Alright, let's do it. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh pull god. Up, pull up. Altitude. 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 <sighs> Holy shit. Altitude. 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 That was close. I wasn't really paying attention, but... Um... Yeah. <laughs> that was a tough one. Um... Had to give it some power. But I almost didn't make that. I almost crushed into the ground. Uh, but we did it, so... So, yeah, that's all for this part, guys. Uh, if you liked it, uh, smash like a button, like a badass, leave a comment. I'll see you guys next time. Farewell.